I serve on the State Board of Education from the 5th Congressional District, and you all are likely my constituents, and I apologize for not having seen more of you, and I'll try and do better in the future. But I have seen a lot of Richard and talked to Richard, and I want to thank him for being foresighted, but most of our, mostly for being tenacious in trying to uh, move, you know, we're not trying to change the direction of education, we're just trying to get the ship to move a little bit, and it's a big freighter and it's been in motion for a long time. And what we are failing to provide students in the state of Colorado with is a good opportunity for career and technical education, or what I used to call vocational education. We have far too many kids that are accumulating far too much debt, going to college, getting degrees that, that when it comes to paying, uh, paying back that debt to return on investments, just not there. If we can provide these kids with reasonable, uh, good alternatives. Uh, we will be doing not only them a great service, but we will be doing our state and our society a great service. Uh, and if as a society we don't start holding those crafts and trades and the modern equivalent thereof it, and providing them with the, the proper uh, respect and providing people with the proper opportunity <coughs> to achieve that kind of education, it's shame on us. So. If you get students starting to use their hands, if you start getting students to be able to use the skills, you will see improvements in education. Because there's some students, that's what they're there for. They really need to use their hands. I was hired in 2000 as principal of the Peyton Middle School High School. 2002, I was given the job of superintendent, so I've now been 16 years as superintendent at the Peyton School District. We have always wanted some type of career technical. We wanted vocation. And this is now our final opportunity that we had a building that we could start filling. So what happened is that when Mr. Madsen came out and he saw our facility, he was saying, here's what you can do. Here's how you can do it. Here's what we can do to partner. And so we presented that to the board, and at that meeting, the board said, what would it take to get you to come out to Peyton to do this? And after we were able to talk, because we are a small rural school, our boards can make decisions more quickly. Uh, somebody donated at uh, Time Savers, if you know about their Sanders, they donated a $350,000 uh, uh, two-head two sander. But in 2015, we had an open house. We had our manufacturers from Germany. We had our manufacturers from Canada, Austria. And they came to, out to Peyton. Now remember, Peyton, 500 people, 600 kids. We don't even have a town. It's a township. And which for some of these companies going, oh crud, what are we going to do? Uh, but they came out and they spoke to our community. But I invited superintendents from around the area saying, here's what we're developing, do you want to be part of this? I knew student-wise I could not handle all the students that would want to come to this program. So I offered up for other schools to send students to my school so that they can learn these things. So in 2016, uh, Whitefield thought it was a great idea to partner. Now Whitefield is over 45 miles away from Peyton. And because they couldn't get busing, the 15 kids that wanted to come out, they made an agreement with the parents that they would allow the students to drive. So for the second semester, or for second semester of the 15-16 school year, we had students coming from Whitefield driving out to take our courses. In 2016, in August, they started sending a bus. But if you take the ideas, if you take what we're doing, and move it in, whether it's hospitality, whether it's construction, whether it's you know, drones or technology, it's the ideas behind what we're trying to do because every time we were told, no, you can't do that, we figured out a way to do it. But what we're trying to create is a manufacturing, lean manufacturing, yes, it's woods. That's, that's what we're doing because that's the manufacturers and company that's supporting us. But if you can run this as a planer, you could probably do something with irons, metal, carbonite, plastics. It's the same idea on the machines. So they're transferable skills. 
So that, the sander, we have multi-routers, so when you talk about math, you have the XYZ axis, and so you're teaching the math within it. So we're able to give math credits. We're also looking at, because of the science of wood, being able to give science credit. We're also looking at, because of if you're starting to turn in papers, then there could be some English credits. So this elective type of deal is, man, the kids are in school all day, what the credit are they gonna do to be able to get their you know, normal credits? Well, in 2020, 2021, the standards changed at the state. And you get a national recognized stand, uh, certificate, you can graduate just as if you had an ACT score, SAT score, or whatever. So things are changing. And the partnership is between the White Hill School District and the Payton School District. We purchased the building together. It was an old potato chip factory. It had been abandoned for years. And actually, it was in competition with a couple of marijuana grows. And we called up the business owners and saying, here's what we're trying to do. We're the low bid, and they allowed us to buy it from them because they saw what we were trying to do. 46,000 square foot facility that we were able to get to share. And we'll see a few pictures here in a little bit. Uh, we created a third board, and, and again, this is again where creativity comes in. How can two districts share programs in a different building in somebody, somebody else's backyard? So we created a third board, and bless the board member's heart, uh, typically things don't get done in a quick fashion with school boards. So if we created a third board, so we have two people from Peyton representing the Peyton School District. We have two people on the board representing the Whitefield School District. And nothing gets done unless both, unless we have really in a sense of a 3-1 or a 4-0 vote. Because if Peyton has their interest and Whitefield has their interest, then we can't do it. That's why we don't have an odd number on our board. So we created that board and we represent. Now we do have a spending limit. You know, in other words, we can't spend more than $30,000 in that program unless we get board approval to be able to do that. So we're just not so autonomous that we can't do anything, but we still have our responsibilities. And we purchased the building together, I think it was $1.1 million. Uh, we had to renovate it a little bit. Most of it was with the rooftop units. That cost us $1.4 million. But we also have a portion in that now. Yeah. Right, so here's the, now we have an 1,800 square foot area that we call our beginning classroom because, you know, they need to be focused on what they're doing, and so it has three walls and a garage door. Because if not, and you started seeing all those machines all around, you'd want to go use the ability to play. You want to go use the real nice fun machines. But you have to learn basics. Um, but let me kind of, as we continue to think about what can be done, and again, this is what's done in Peyton and at the mill. But currently, uh, we're working with Stiles University when they sell a machine, they send students and we train their students on the machines that we have. CTE Teacher Academy, work with teachers about how to work with businesses, how to be able to work with industry, different techniques, but also how, how what you're doing is important to the school. Yep. So we started all these different partnerships with these school districts to say if you participate in our program, allow our student to participate in yours, and especially engineering. There's no way I can start an engineering program with 600 kids. So Falcon will allow a couple of our students to go take engineering classes in the Falcon School District. So it's those types of partnerships that I think can be created between Salida and Buena Vista and Leadville and it's Fair Play, right? So at the mill, at the Whitefield. So Whitefield High School, Whitefield School District has Mesa Ridge, Whitefield, and Discovery. All three of those participate in our program down at the mill. Fountain Fort Carson, Fountain Fort Carson High School participates in our program. If somebody wants to send their students, we, what we do is we charge them two-sevenths of their PPR. They're there for basically two periods. So that's all we're doing. We're not trying to gouge them. We're not trying to do anything but say, here's an, op I did something wrong. Here is an opportunity that your students have that you don't have to start this program. All you need to do is get them here. Uh, Colorado, Colorado School of Deaf and the Blind has sent students to the construction program. And it started out that the one student had a full-time uh, aide right next to him, 
And after about three weeks, the kids said, I don't need you. I can figure out what's going on. Homeschool programs have been invited, and so the charter schools. So we've been able to work with the charter schools to say, if you want to send your child, a uh, student, to our program, two sevens PPOR. Do you understand what PPOR is? Per pupil revenue. That's what the state pays us. They, 